Today is a messy bun getting no shit done kind of day. A special thank you to my patrons, Acrophobe, Christina, Wild Rose, Jam Beans, Jay Thomas, Lauren Chris, Michael B. Petty, That British Unicorn, Sky Andropolis, Debbie Elliott, and D. Higgins. Hey, hi, hello, friends. So you're probably wondering, why is your hair up in a bun? And you still have your glasses and the glare still sucks. It will be here. It will continue to suck. I would say I'm sorry, but at this point, it just is what it is. I am sorry about it, but I can't do anything. I guess I did say sorry, huh? Anyway, another thing I have to say sorry about is that I forgot to credit in my last video. I know I put it in the both the description and in my pinned comment, but I still wanted to say it in person. First off, I want to thank my friend Just Saying uh, on YouTube. She's another creator. She does really fantastic compilations. So if you guys have somehow managed to not hear about her, um, please go check her out. She's great, especially her second channel. Um, she's been uploading a lot of really funny edits on there and I really love watching them. So if you guys wanna go check it out, I highly recommend it. I will have the uh, channel linked somewhere up in the cards if I can do that and then also throw it down below in, in the pink comment. And I also wanna say a shout out to the mighty Thor. Um, he uploads all of, he, I'm gonna say he because Thor is a he, but I don't really know if the channel creator is a he as well. The icon is a he, but I don't wanna assume. Anyway, um, they have uh, uploaded all of Amberlynn and Chantel's lives on there, and I really did rely on that. The farms are a scary place, and I don't like going there very often. So, um, that's where I got all of the videos, uh, mostly just saying, but also a little bit of Thor. And I wanted to say thank you to both of them so, so very much. Could not be making the, that, the videos that I'm doing on Chantel right now without them. With all that said, let's jump into Amberlynn. So, a couple of things. First, I know I'm a little bit late with this video. I'm still trying my best, still sick, unfortunately. My eye is still healing. So, all that's happening and it's taking me a little bit of time to get back up on my feet and like do things and be a functional member of society. Soon though, soon, I promise. Second is before we get into her actual videos, which she uploaded two of, there was a little bit of drama. First things first, as you know, Amber got engaged. She took a little bit of time off. She had her live that she did and then she was pretty silent after for a while on there. Um, not really uploading a lot of videos and not really on the internet, as it were. And then Foodie Beauty did her four hour rage fest when she was having her tit for tat with Jen by uh, Life by Jen. And Amber Lynn popped up in her chat. And she gave her a lot of very, very nice, very, very hefty super chats. And she said, Jen is 200 pounds heavier than you though, talking in reference to Jen rebuffing essentially Foodie Beauty's advice. That is such a weird thing to say. Does that mean that if you are much, much heavier, you can't give advice to somebody or refuse advice from somebody who's much lighter? I, I'm confused. Does that mean that if someone is lighter than you, then you automatically have to both want and accept their help? Because that has been the whole point of your and Chantel, especially his negative reactions towards the commentary community, right? On your commentary community. You don't like us because we have things to say about your weight. Well, since you're light, since I'm lighter than you, since you're much, much heavier than I am, well, why can't I just give you advice? If it's okay for Chantel, who has so far not been successful on the advice that she's doling out to Life by Jen, to give her advice anyway, then why can't I also give you advice? Why can't I also give Chantel advice? Do you see the hypocrisy there? Either it was okay for both of you to have done it, I think it was okay for Chantel to say whatever she wants, right? And I think I'm okay to say whatever I want. So if it was okay for Chantel to have done it, then it's okay for me to have done it. If it's not okay for Chantel, then it's not okay for me. Because it's all a gradient, right? You're suffering from the problems that are more extreme, you and then Jen maybe a little bit more, maybe a less than you. I don't know where she is on the weight spectrum, right? And then Chantel is suffering from the same problems, maybe just a slightly, she's just slightly less heavy than you guys. And then, you know, like, then there's like the other reactors and I'm also in there, right? We're all somewhere on the spectrum of 900 pounds to perfect picture of health. We're all somewhere suffering in that spectrum. So if it's okay for you to give advice to somebody who is heavier than you because you think you know better, then I should be able to do that regardless of if you're getting criticism yourself or not. 
But you can't have it both ways. You can't have it be that I'm a terrible person and a despicable piece of shit for giving advice to you and Chantel, but it's okay for Chantel to go on and give hypocritical advice to life by Jen when she herself has managed to lose 0% weight. Okay? Okay. With all that said, let's get into our actual videos. Yay! So these videos are filmed out of order. I figured that out after I saw her second video. I'm gonna cover them in the order in which she presented them, though just for your own like reference in your head, she did film both of these videos, one right after the other, and then chose to upload the second video she filmed first. So this is the get ready with me that she's doing. She's trying out some new products and she's just chatting to them. So we'll just go through it with her. I think I have most of her video in this. I think I cut out, I want to say it's like a 14 minute video. I cut out maybe like five minutes worth of content or something like that. But a lot of it is in here because I do want to talk about it a little bit. And it's been a while since we caught up with our girl. Hey guys. First thing we're using is Hard Candy Sheer Envy Stick It to Pores. This is a pore primer stick. Three things in quick succession. First, I like her new intro. I like the music. It's kind of jazzy. It makes me happy. I like it. I also like the picture that she used of herself. I know it's filtered, but it's cute. She looks cute and I appreciate it. Second thing. I really like her get ready with me's. I think I like her get ready with me, with me's, even if she doesn't do necessarily a good job, then I like any of her other content. Because when she does vlogs and stuff like that, she sprinkles in like a lot of food content and I'm just not here for that. So when she's got like a vlog um, that doesn't have food content or she's got like a try on haul or she's got this, right? A get ready with me. She still talks about her life. So I get all of the same bits of information that I would in one of her other videos, but I don't actually have to watch any of her food content, which I have two problems with. I've said before and I'll say it again. Eating food on her channel does detrimental things to her mental health. People make negative comments about it and no one will convince me that fat phobia is not a real thing because she does get a lot of just plain, mean, hateful vitriol right? Regardless of her choices in life, which I think it's fair to criticize some of her choices in life. I think just the pure awful things that sometimes people can say to her stuff like go die and things like that, that's not appropriate, but she does get that. So I can try and say, hey guys, don't go do that. I don't think any of my audience members are doing that. If you guys are, please don't do that. It's not helpful and it's not kind. But because there are people who are going to come onto your channel and do that, it is also in your hands to try and minimize that and protect yourself as much as you can, right? You should expect and try and get people to be better, but just because they're not going to be doesn't mean that it's perfectly okay for you to just be, well, I guess if they can't be better, we'll just continue on the harmful behavior. I, it's, that's unproductive, right? Try and change the world for the better and try and protect yourself at the same time. And if you're doing the second one, you'll be able to do the, the first one for a lot longer and a lot better. Okay? Last but not least, is Hard Candy good? I think I had exactly one product from Hard Candy. It was like their tiki bronzer thing that was like a really big thing in the makeup community a little while back. Everyone's like, it's just so beautiful. And it was like a highlighter. And then uh, I bought it. I used it like twice. And I don't remember what my impressions of it were. And then I dropped it and it broke. And I haven't tried anything from Hard Candy since then. But I think it's also because there's not like a lot of Walmart around me, so I don't end up going to Walmart very often. But if you guys know, let me know, because I will make a trip for that. So, hello. Um, I'm engaged. So that is an actual situation. I <clears throat> am shook to the core. Um, it was so... <laughs> special and it was totally Becky the way she asked me um we're keeping that private for now <laughs> there are a few people who know you know close people but <laughs> oh my god I love her so much and I will say though she was supposed to ask me last year she had it all planned not supposed to like that's what she wanted to do um and well, the story goes like this, which I can say this part. I am genuinely very happy about her engagement. I know that, I said this before in my other video too, but I'll say it here again. I've had my uh, doubts about her and Becky's relationship, but they really seem to love each other. And, you know, I think wanting happiness for other people is a good thing. 
even if that's happiness for Amber. I think that if she's happier in her life, if she's more content in her life, then she might be more willing to put in the effort. I know it goes against conventional thinking that you should want to get better for other people. You should want to get better for yourself. But if you can't get better for yourself, if you can't fix your mental health for yourself, then do it, start the, the process for other people right? Because once you get into the process of trying to improve your mental health, then I think that you will learn to love yourself. The, the starting is the hard part. A lot of times getting into therapy and committing to therapy is the hard part. And yes, ideally it should be because you want to do it for yourself, because you love yourself, because you know you need the help. But even if it's not, even if your motivation is going because you don't want to disappoint your parents, you don't want to disappoint your partner, you want to have a long, fulfilling life with them, I don't think that's a bad thing. I think those are all good things. I think anything that leads you to getting the mental health that you need is a good thing, even if it's not the ideal circumstances. So I'm glad. And I hope that both her and Becky have a fantastic, beautiful, healthy, long-lived life together. And I hope that they improve each other. I hope that they become a gooder, gooder, better influence on each other. I hope that Becky pushes Amber to try and be healthier, to try and live a longer life so that she can have her wife for as long as she can have her, right? And vice versa. I hope that Amber does the same thing with Becky. Because like I said, both of them are unhealthy. And I worry sometimes that if they ever get to the point where neither one of them can do things for themselves, what is going to happen then? What if they get to the point where both of them are sick? They're in their like 40s and 50s and both of them start getting ill, right? Diabetes is a concern. Heart disease is a concern. Just mechanical problems such as knee, ankle, hip problems become a concern. What happens then? Who's going to take care of them? And at that point, Amberlynn might not be capable of doing YouTube anymore, whether it's by her own volition or it's because YouTube has demonetized some channels or it's because the trends have moved on and people no longer care. I don't know, but it might not be an option for her or YouTube might not even exist or the world has collapsed. Who knows? Right. What are you going to do then? You 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 need to be self-sufficient. You need to take care of yourself so that you can take care of yourself later on down the line right? Put yourself in the best position so that as you age, you have a happy and healthy like latter half of your life. Because I know, especially for Amber, the first half of her life might not have been, right? Pre-YouTube, from everything I've gathered, her life was very difficult. She's had a hard life. Don't you want to make the second half of your life like the best you possibly can? Okay, so what had happened was... <laughs> Becky, okay, so I forget what was happening, but Dana and Destiny were actually over. Um, this was during Vlogmas. And long story short, she was going to ask me on my birthday, but I had no idea. So it was during Vlogmas. My birthday is December 27th, by the way. And Becky was showing all of us something on her phone, like a picture. And I happened to scroll over on her phone and I saw a picture of an engagement ring. And I said, Becky, what's this and why is your hand holding it? <laughs> because the engagement ring was in her hand. Well, that's how I found out. <laughs> I've had somebody ruin a surprise uh, that I was planning on giving to others before. And so I really feel for her. I really do. I feel for Becky a lot in this moment because it really sucks when you were like planning stuff out with meticulous detail and you like written down everything that you wanted and then all of a sudden somebody comes by and just pops your bubble. It's a heartbreaking feeling. What I will say though is... This is why you should never give your phone to anybody. Never let them swipe. If there's one picture, just like show them that one picture and hold the phone in your hand. Or better yet, this is what I do now because I've had that happen. People are just scrolling through my phone. I'm like, no, unacceptable. I just like will send that picture like WhatsApp or text them that one picture. They're like, oh, look at this picture there. Now you've seen it. You can see it on your own phone. Scroll through your own phone. Leave my stuff alone. I don't even have anything on my phone. I just really don't like the idea of it. Next thing I'm using is Armani Luminous Silk Perfect Glow Flawless Foundation. I've actually never used this before, so let's hope for the best. 
I really don't like that foundation. I have tried it. So uh, before, I don't. I haven't been inside of a Sephora in a while, but before the pandemic, I am a very big believer in like getting a sample size of stuff, trying it before you buy it, because not everything will suit your skin first. Second, equally as importantly, is that uh, if you don't like something, returning it means that you're going to be producing a lot of waste. So it's not just about money. I know a lot of people are like, well, if she's got the money for it, who cares if she didn't like it, you know? She can just keep the thing even if she doesn't return it and whatever, the 50 bucks or whatever is not gonna make a difference to her. But they will to the environment. You know, that's waste that you're producing. So don't do that. I just don't like the idea of it. If you are a oilier skinned gal like I am, right? I get very, very oily right in my T-zone here and the rest of my face like down here and whatnot, I get eczema, like right here I get so much eczema like on my cheeks and on the inner corners of my eyes I get eczema too, which is weird. Um, I get eczema there and so it gets really dry there, but the rest of my face I'm actually pretty oily and that foundation broke up so bad on my skin. For something that expensive, it is unacceptable. I completely ruined it i felt you guys have no idea how bad i felt like i didn't care about myself i didn't care that i knew for my sake i felt so bad because becky was planning like this whole thing and ugh, i felt so bad oh my god but yeah that's how i found out and she was like oh my god blah 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 i was gonna propose on your birthday and I was like oh my god you shouldn't have told me that but then when she told me I was like you know do what your heart is telling you to do but yeah once more I feel for her right I, so interestingly enough I've had it happen both well not both ways I haven't been trying to well I was trying to tell you give people a surprise and someone ruined that they told them preemptively before I could and that really really sucked I was so upset but one of the best moments of my life was when partner proposed to me um so uh, we were doing a long distance thing and uh, he flew in basically to surprise me. He told uh, my mom, he told my friends, my brother, and he didn't tell me. So I was at work and my friend comes to pick me up and she's like, hey, you know, I don't have a car at that point. So she's like, hey, yeah, well, I'll pick you up. It's fine, you know, after work. And I'm like, oh, okay, we'll go get coffee or something together. And as I'm leaving in the morning, my mom was like, do you want to put some lip gloss on? Which she's never said to me before in my life. And it, nothing clicked with me because I am literally oblivious. And then she goes, and I'm like, yeah, okay, I guess I'll put some lip gloss on. And then after work, my, um, my friend comes to pick me up, my best friend. And uh, she's like, hey, I got to swing by your brother's place to pick something up. My brother is in med school at this point. And, you know, he's got his, like, own apartment thing. And I was like, my brother doesn't really read. So what book could she possibly want from him? And it still didn't clue in with me that, you know, something was like up because once more, really oblivious. So we get there and she parks the car and she's like, you know, I'm like, okay, you can just go inside and grab the thing from him. I'll stay inside. It was kind of cold. And she's like, no, no, come in with me. You know, we can both say hi and whatnot. And I'm like, oh, okay, all right, I guess. She's like, yeah, he gave me the key earlier today. Still nothing. Why would he give her a key to his place? Um, and she goes inside and it's completely dark. And I'm like, oh, that's so weird. And then turns the light on and all of my friends are like standing there dressed as the Avengers. Um, which if you guys don't know, I'm a huge like nerd and I love Marvel and I love the Avengers. Um, especially when the first one was happening, like the hype was real. And uh, partner comes down the stairs dressed fully as Loki with like the staff that he made by hand. It glowed in everything in his hand. And he proposed to me and I still have that ring. Like I love that. That ring was not like super. This is like the actual ring that he proposed to me with um, that I'm wearing. But um, he also gave me like this gold and like emerald ring, which like matched Loki's colors. And I love it so much. And to this day, I have it. And it just makes me incredibly happy. It was like one of the best moments of my life. <sighs> makes me really love him because he gets me. He knows. He knows who I am as a person. <laughs> good memories that's all is really something special um like i have been engaged one other time but i was a teenager so that was kind of like whatever to me but this is like the real deal um true 
love, I'll tell you that much. Like, our love for each other is just so, like, unconditional. First of all, I don't believe in the concept of unconditional love. I don't think that that is a helpful concept, and I actually think it's a little bit toxic, right? You should love a person in spite of almost anything else. But if I had a child and that child turned out to be like a, you know, like a, you know what I'm saying, right? Um, they turned out to be like pedo bear, whatever. Um, I wouldn't love them. No, I don't believe I'm not going to love you then. That is not my love isn't that unconditional, right? If um, partner or somebody that I was in a relationship with was abusive. No, I wouldn't love them then. So this idea that you have to be unconditionally devoted to another person is, I think, a little bit toxic, right? You should love them almost in spite of anything else. You should love them in spite of things that they can't help, right? If they have negative characteristics or negative traits that they're trying to better, then you should still love them. But I don't think that just saying that it's unconditional. If I am eating myself to death, then I would not want my partner to love me unconditionally. I would want them to leave because I love them enough to know that I, this is unfair, that I am doing something that's gonna irreparably harm them. And I would want them to leave. I wouldn't want them to love me to the point of death. I wouldn't want them to love me to the point of immobility. I wouldn't want them to love me to the point of making me, making me rely on them for basic things like showers. I just don't. Maybe that's a hot take. I don't know. Secondarily, um, which other time were you engaged, ma'am? Please, details, details. Look how white my face looks compared to my actual natural skin. I literally think that, I think that, I think, I think that I think I'm whiter than I really am. Oof, that foundation does not match. And I know that's coming, that's like rich coming from someone who looks hella orange, like one level above Oompa Loompa. But first of all, I like the orangey color. Second of all, I am actually really yellow toned. And so sometimes for some reason in these lights, it reads orange. And I don't know how to fix that because I am not better with camera. Um, I th I'm thinking maybe I'll text like, well, I don't really know her personally, but like on Instagram, I'll send a message to like Rob Beauty Christie because she often suffers from being orange. <laughs> so maybe she'll be able to help me. Anyway. That foundation is A, way too light for her, B, there is not enough coverage in that in there for her, and C, she's got a lot of redness in her face. Maybe try something with a little bit of a green tinge to it. Algenist makes a great green tinted serum, so I would recommend that. You don't wanna go with something that's too, too green and pigmented because covering that green can be very difficult too. So try the Algenist thing, put a little bit of that on, and then put foundation on. It will cover a lot better, and then anything you layer on top won't look patchy either because if your foundation isn't covering all the issues with your skin, Skin underneath like well everything you put on top is also gonna look like it's got different colorations in it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a darker foundation this is born this way by Too Faced we're gonna see if we can fix it just the teeniest bit this might be an absolute fail and now I know though to buy a foundation that is just a little bit darker Oh boy. I mean, I guess it helped a little bit, but now I just feel like I look extra, extra yellow. While the idea of the darker color actually isn't all that bad, I would recommend dotting it around the perimeters of your face, like underneath your jawline and right where like your cheekbones would be, and then like blending it out like that. So what will that will do is it'll blend the color uh, of the rest of your foundation more seamlessly into your neck, but at the same time, it will provide like very subtle contouring, and that should help like enhance your features and like help with the roundness. I'm telling you, Nobody believes me when I say this on camera, but I have a very, very round face. It's not just me being fat, though it is also fat. I have a very round, round face. And so to give my face some structure, I tend to put like darker color here. I'll put a darker color here, a little bit around my forehead, because you know, your girl got a five head, not even a forehead. And just around the perimeters of my face in like an, a more like angular shape, right? So like longer. So not quite coming in quite as far, but like pretty like darker around like just the edges here, just to give me a little bit more structure. And I think she could use that. I just, I'm never gonna find good foundation. I can't believe my foundation is discontinued. So, cause I'm just gonna use some e.l.f. on my eyebrows. Um, 
I don't really have eyebrows and I don't care about eyebrows. So I'm just going to do this to make them a little darker. I know this is a lot of makeup talk, but this is a get ready with me and your girl loves makeup, so I gotta talk about it. If you guys are looking for a good color match and you're a very, very dry skinned gal, try the uh, the Fenty Hydrating Foundation. It is far too, it's like a grease slick on my face. I cannot wear it, but my little sister has really, really like dry, dry skin. Sorry, not oily. She has really, really dry skin and for her, it works very, very well. So if you're a really dry skin gal, you'll like it and they've got a ton of shades. If you are um, medium to like oilier skin, try the original Fenty formula. That's my personal favorite foundation. My goal ultimately in life is to use up all of the bajillion foundations i own and then only rebuy that one because that one is so fantastic it looks beautiful and filtered on my skin and it lasts for like the whole day plus the concealer it's great secondarily you need eyebrows eyebrows frame the face you guys see my eyebrows are really dark but that's because my hair is really dark you need something that is going to complement your hair it's going to carve out your face otherwise what ends up happening is that you look like very smooth and stretched. And when you've got a round face, already that's not something you want. Already it's gonna it's gonna make you look just really flat and very, very moon face. It's gonna make you look like you have more chub in your face than you really do. You want the darker eyebrow because that's where it's gonna draw the eye. It's gonna draw attention to your eyes, to your nose, to your forehead, and it's gonna cut your face a little bit and make it look like it's got a lot more shape. I was going through a seasonal depression thing, but can I still call it that for real? Like the holidays are long gone. I mean, we're still in winter. It could be definitely be a winter depression for sure. Um, Cause I'm just like very unmotivated and just like, ugh. Hmm. Wearing away for the, from the makeup talk for a minute. Um, yes. It could be the depression. I mean, the holidays have ended. A lot of people really look forward to the holidays. Amberlynn especially, she goes ham on Christmas. So it would make sense to me that once they end, you don't really have anything else going on. You go, oh, everything is over. There's nothing happening. Very possible. Not saying that that's not a possibility. I'm just saying it could also be the fact that this is the time when YouTube historically has like the lowest, uh, what is it, CPMs, CMP, something like that. Uh, the lowest like compensation, right? Maybe that's the reason. I'm just throwing it out there. I don't know which one is true. I not in her brain, so I don't know. Maybe because she's already feeling sad, it made it eat. And you know, this is also the lowest uh, the time where she gets paid the least. She's like, all right, well, this is the best time to take a break, which is fine. But not acknowledging that is always a little weird to me. So now I'm gonna do some magnetic eyeliner to put on some eyelashes. This is Ease Beauty. Looks like this, got it off of Amazon. I love mascara on the bottom lash. I know a lot of people don't like that, but I personally do. I love it. All right, so now we're going to do blush and I'm gonna be using Orgasm X by NARS. First time I've ever used it. <sighs> I do love blush, but I don't love it that much, oh my God. Too much, too much. I'll fix it though. Okay, really quick hot takes. Magnetic lashes, yay. I actually got a set of them myself. I'll try and, if I remember, I'll try and link them down below as well. It's not like, I don't get anything from me. I just like these lashes. Uh, they look great. I'm not wearing magnetic lashes today. I'm wearing regular eyelashes and I realize how much I hate them because I did a bad job and they're sticking up funny. And I love bottom lash mascara. I don't know why more people don't like them. It gives you like a really like doll-like effect and like your baby bird and got really, really big eyes. And I really like that look. Oof. That is, that blush is too pigmented for her. It's going straight clown. Um, orgasm is very, very popular for Norris. I really wish they would move away from the orgasm stuff now because honestly, it's just been done to death. Um, this particular version of orgasm, I don't know. I have not used it, but the original orgasm I have, I got it as a 100 point perk from Sephora, 500 point perk, I don't remember, but a point perk from Sephora, I never bought it. I did, however, buy one that I think is very similar, but works better for deeper, uh, for uh, like a medium skin tone. If you're very fair, orgasm looks great on you, but it is a little bit too light to really work on like medium to like medium deep skin tones. And for that, I would recommend trying Deep Throat. It's just a little bit deeper and it doesn't have a lot of the chunkier glitters in it that orgasm has, very, very good blush. 
And if you're even darker than that, and, and please remember, I only have my skin and potentially the skin of my mom and sister to use who are quite a few shades darker than I am, but they're still not like the deepest end of the spectrum. So I can only tell you from that small experience. Um, but if you've got a deeper skin tone, my mom falls into like the deep category, but not the dark deep category. And my sister is like kind of around there. She's a little bit, she was like medium deep to like dark deep some, somewhere. She's somewhere like that. Anyway, um, the colors that look fantastic on them and oddly enough, look a lot like that looks a lot like orgasm does on my skin is a uh, Taos. But another color that I really recommend also is uh, Lovejoy. Lovejoy is so beautiful. I tried putting it on my face and I ended up looking a little crazy, but Lovejoy is so stunning. It's such a stunning blush. If you are in that like darker complexion, like darker end of medium heading towards deep, try that. I think you might really like it. Okay, so now I'm gonna use Fenty Beauty um, highlighter. Love it. I just use my finger cause really don't care. And I always just throw some right there. I just, I always put some here. You know, there's no rhyme or reason. It's kind of like art. When you feel it, you feel it. And a good way to tone down a lot of that like craziness from the blush. If you ever put on blush and you're like, oh God, too much, too much. Don't put cream on top of that. It's gonna get really clumpy and gross. Um, instead, take your face powder and put that. Uh, another thing to keep it from happening in the first place is maybe set your face lightly before you go in with a blush like that. Uh, that's why I think this happened is because she's got something dewy underneath and she put a very dewy foundation on top. And then on top of all of that, she's going in with a powder blush. It's just gonna adhere more and it's gonna wanna blend out less. So if you've got something like that, very lightly take something that's got like a satiny finish, not even like a full matte if you don't like that look. Just sort of tap it off and then just dust it on top of your cheeks where you're going to apply that blush and then apply the blush. If you go with something that's very dewy because dewy does not set the way that matte does, it's gonna look crazy. It will inherently look crazy. Don't do that, okay? Okay. Now for the fun part. To the haters who wanna see me in pain. I've only ever used this once and it did hurt. This is the Too Faced Lip Injection Maximum Plump. The extra strength instant and long-term lip plumper. And I will say it does work and it does hurt. So I wanted to show you guys my lips. <sighs> it hurts so bad that I feel the throb of my heart in my lips, but it really does work. My lips are super tiny, so it probably doesn't look like it to y'all. <laughs> All right. Last point that I'm gonna make in this, uh, this was pretty short, not really hap not a lot happening in this video, but there was a lot of makeup. So two quick really points and then we're gonna move on to her next video. First, she's applied the, the highlighter in a very weird position. It should not, like if you see her blush is actually a little bit higher on top of her highlighter too. Keep the blush lower than where you want to apply your highlighter because otherwise it's the light is gonna catch it and it's gonna look odd. Your highlighter really shouldn't be sandwiched between two layer like blush on either side of it. What you want is the highest point of your face to have the highlighter on it so that when you turn, it kind of gives it this like, like, it, like your cheekbone is a lot more angular than it is. When your um, blush is higher than that, it's gonna make it look like you've got a lump in the middle of your cheek which is not what you're going for, right? Because that's what your eye, what's your eye is gonna interpret it as. Um, secondarily, uh, I think I like the, I think I like the lip plumper. It looks, it looks nice on her. First of all, it's really nice and shiny. Second of all, it does seem to be working. So good on her for that. I personally do not like any of that stuff because it burns and I'm not 100% sure. I've never really done the research on it, so I can't say. But I think that stuff, because it irritates your lip and causes it to like, fill with fluid, I think it might actually damage the structure of your lips going forward. Like that inflation, deflation, inflation, deflation might hurt your lips uh, in the long run. Something about like retaining the shape of them as you age. I don't really know, but just be careful, okay? Anyway, next. So I was wanting to do my makeup for this video, but I have makeup in this haul that I want to use but I wanna do the haul first because my whole vanity looks crazy right now because I have everything I wanna haul on the vanity. So I just, I can't do my makeup right now. So I'm looking kinda 
rough. I did just get out of the shower, so my hair is wet, still a little bit drippy and everything, but I'm just trying to get ready. But I can't get ready until I do this haul. I've actually been putting it off long enough. All right, this is a massive haul. So this haul contains a lot of the new stuff that she's trying in her first video. And she has some clothes in here too. I see that from her title. Um, I have skipped through the videos like I always do. Um, but I was hoping she would be trying on the clothes to show us. She does not, which is a little bit disheartening. It's hard to get an idea of what the clothes will look like, both with Amber and with Chantel. They've got a unique shape, and there are people out there who are their size, which is why I think it's good if you try the clothes on so that people can see what they look like, right? Um, it doesn't help me a lot of times when I look at clothes on a model because I look at them and I'm like, well, you've got a perfect skinny figure. How is that going to look on someone who's very broad-shouldered and, you know, not as busty and, you know, just have has more hips than you. What will that look like on them? And that's why it's helpful to try the clothes on and show me what they look like. If you just hold them up, especially like, I'm not trying to be mean here, especially with Amber, because of her clothes being so large, when she just holds them up, they just look formless and shapeless, right? You wanna wear them and show us what they look like. So I'm gonna start with what I got from Target. I got three colorful NYX eyeliners, purple, green, and yellow. This is the professional makeup liner stick. We have cosmic yellow, intense teal, and graphic purple. So I am excited to try those. Has anyone tried the, the liners from NYX? Because I got the ones from ColourPop, uh, the ones that are part of the Raw Beauty Christie collection, which by the way, that's what I'm wearing on my eyes if you guys like it. I love her palette. I loved her other one that she did with Pure and I love this one too. Um, wait, let me see if you guys can. I don't know if you guys can see it. Can you see it? It's a very soft, like foresty kind of greeny, yellowy look. And I really, really like it. I love the entire palette, love the entire collection. The quality of everything is like absolutely stunning. And I really like the eyeliners that came with it, but they don't have as many colors. And the other eyeliners I've tried from ColourPop, I've had bad luck with. So let me know if you guys have tried the NYX ones. I would like to get them, but you know. Last thing from Target is a makeup palette by Revolution Makeup Revolution London, Patricia Bright Rich in Color Shadow Palette. <gasps> you guys, this is stunning. So this is how it looks. And then when you open it, you're just like, okay. And this is actually tin. So I thought that was pretty cool. All right, you guys, are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? <gasps> oh my look at those colors aren't they beautiful they're so vibrant i really really love vibrant colors and i love glitter so this is perfect for me i'm not the biggest fan of revolution outside of the uh emily noel palette i have actually had really bad luck with revolution makeup as a whole not really a big fan of it but i think that there are other palettes out there that are comparable in price you know so if you want something that's kind of like like very bright and colorful try ColourPop ColourPop is generally my go-to they tend to have very like um standard good quality formulas all across the board but also try the festival palette from BH they have other palettes as well and I've tried some of those as well especially the new I think it's like the ice cream collection beautiful the formula on those is stunning like I've had very, very rarely have I had a better formula. Very, very good palette. Highly recommend. So it's just a super cute black and white purse with a simple little shoulder majiggy. Why am I like this? No one will ever know. And it opens like this. I love that. So in the same website, I got this cute little yellow bag. Uh, I used to hate yellow, which is really weird, but I feel like yellow just brings happiness. Cute little string here. And you just pull it down to open it. I will say the opening is pretty small, but I'm totally fine with that. It is so cute. Same website, we got this really cute pink purse. This is just a super small crossbody, but I feel like it's perfect size. Ooh, okay, I like the pink purse a lot. I think the pink purse is very cute. 
I don't like the backpacks. I don't like the the tiny backpacks that she wears. It there's something about it that strikes me as being slightly comical and slightly sad, right? Um, I don't. I can't quite put my finger on why. I just like the idea of the the really tiny backpacks on her. I think it's because the comparison between her size and the backpack really like it. It almost looks like she's purposefully trying to make fun of her size, almost. And I know that's not what she's doing, but that's what it feels like, right? They're like, I don't know, just something about it just strikes me as being odd. And I really don't like those clamshell purses. I never have, especially the soft bottom ones, because everything, you can't put anything inside of it that requires structure, because you put them in there, and then you try and put it down somewhere, and it just, everything just sort of, not a fan. Next, we're gonna do Torrid. Okay, so from Torrid, I got these really adorable St. Patrick's choker set here, and I really like this. I mean, they're obviously St. Patrick. That's why they're for sale right now. Um, it's literally the six pack shamrock chokers, but I could wear these all year round. My favorite one is actually this black one and it says kiss me on there and i'm just like okay girl i got some earrings from torrid look how adorable those are i love me a statement earring another pair of earrings from torrid just some black dangly flower earrings a dress it is a black dress but over it is which you can actually wear this with any dress because it does come um, unattached, if you will, but over it is this really, really cute see-through dress over thing. Oh my god. All of the jewelry she bought is tacky, that is all I will say on that. But the dress, very, very lovely. I really like that dress. Like, surprisingly so, I really like that dress. I actually want to kind of see if there's, like, one available in my size, low-key, because I really, really like that. Guys, I will be honest, I... <laughs> didn't notice this i get nervous filming i've been doing youtube for a long time but something about filming i just my brain turns into mush and i'm just like i forget what words are see i don't like this she's definitely playing a part here she's saying this because she wants sympathy from the audience she's like well feel bad for me i get nervous too you guys it's not like i'm anybody special you know i haven't been, do been doing this for like eight plus years that's not it at all she doesn't get nervous that's not true um she does get a little bit apprehensive i think to read the comments i think anybody would which is fair right she doesn't get nervous filming she's very comfortable on in front of a camera actually she says this multiple times that the longer she's been on youtube the more comfortable she's become and she's taken longer breaks than this before so it seems incomprehensible to me that she would get nervous now i also got a pajama top but you guys you know me i wear pajamas as if they're just clothing to wear whenever you know i'm not gonna sit there and wear a muumu in public but something like this I could wear this in public and pull it off, okay? It's from Mean Girls, Burn Book. It is so cute. It is sleepwear, but I don't care. The reason she chooses to wear pajamas as tops is because pajamas are looser. I think when you look at just empirically her weight, it might not seem like like six would be tight on her, but you have to remember how short she is. Amber Lynn is only five foot two. I think I lied, not lied, on purpose but like misled you guys in another video quote unquote because i said i was five six and my sister was watching and she's like you filthy filthy liar you're not five six i'm five five i'm so sorry i think i misspoke but um i'm five five right so i'm a little bit taller than she is <laughs> with amber being three inches shorter than me and being so much heavier stuff that would maybe fit a 600 pound woman if they were five six five eight would not necessarily fit her because she's a lot wider right that's how she carries her weight because of her smaller stature and a lot of times the clothes might be a little longer because they're so much bigger but they might not be quite as wide as she needs that's why if you see her wearing clothes that are like very very fitted but they like raunch up a little bit that's kind of what's happening there pajama tops are much much looser they're also made of softer stretchier fabric so they're much more forgiving right even if they don't fit her exactly she can fit into them and as she wears them they will stretch and accommodate her next we have sephora so i got um Skin Perfection Brush Set. Shit. I got Skin Perfecting Brush Set. It's a Sephora collection. I needed some new brushes. 
because I'm gonna go through mine and get rid of some because kind of bold. I got the Marc Jacobs Concealer and Touch Up Stick, which looks like this. Oh my God, it's so like fancy dancy. Like, oh my goodness. I got some new foundation. Don't come for me. I'm probably pronouncing this wrong. I'm just gonna say Armani, okay? So we got some Armani foundation. I'm telling you, why is makeup so expensive? That's what I'm wondering. Let's hope it works well, but that is what it looks like. I got blush NARS. I've heard very good things about this blush. This is in the color Orgasm X. So heard good things, so I'm excited to try it. Last thing I got from Sephora is a lipstick, Fenty Beauty by Rihanna. It is a plush matte lipstick in the color Thick with two Cs. And she looks like this. You guys, I love Fenty Beauty packaging. And this is the color. A little FB on there. Hot takes on all the things. Hot takes. I actually don't know what hot takes means. But um, uh, quick takes on all of them. All right. I like the Sephora blushes, never tried the concealer. I hate that foundation. Uh, and I really, really like the Madame As Well lipsticks. I know that not everyone is a big fan of them, but I think they're good. I already talked about the blush in my previous video. So I'm not, previous video, previous part of this video. So I'm not gonna get into it again. But I really, really like the Madame As Well formula from uh, Fenty. It reminds me a lot of the Sonia Kashuk formula for their um, Bazaar, I think, Grand Bazaar collection that they released like many many years ago and those lipsticks are my favorite lipsticks of life and if you guys don't know i am engaged and you guys are probably like where's your ring well i did just take a shower so i did get a wedding planner it's super cute this is from amazon i am really excited because i don't know i just don't know i feel overwhelmed with it all and the back is super cute it says congratulations on getting engaged you're getting ready to plan for the most exciting day of your life so last but not least, I have some stuff from Hot Topic. Okay, so I got this black dress and guess what? It ain't just a black dress. Look at what it came with. You put this under it and it's like a black dress with this striped shirt underneath. It's long sleeve and it is see-through. So since it comes obviously detached, you can wear this with anything. So I got overalls. <laughs> I did, I got overalls. I'm truly not sure how this is gonna go, but it is skirt overalls. It is velvet with the moon and a star, but it's this really cute cherry jet dress with skulls as the cherries. I just thought it was really, really cute. Honestly, I absolutely love this. But a shirt, came with that as well. Um, you can wear a long sleeve white shirt underneath it if you want. I mean, you don't have to, but I definitely want to. And the last thing I got from Hot Topic is this checkered black and white dress. Okay, I really like the fact that she has a planner. This is the one time I think a planner is appropriate because a wedding is so much work. It took me a full year to plan out my wedding. And you know, I am, I am Southeast Asian. My wedding was a month long. So <laughs> there's probably a lot more happening than I think um, most other weddings are. There was a lot more moving pieces to keep track of, but it's still a behemoth of a task. And it really, really does help to write things down because the art of writing things down actually helps you remember it better as well. That's why like when you're typing, you don't actually tend to remember things quite as well as if you handwrite things. Just a quick throwaway line there. But I like the planner, like the fact that she's doing it. I don't think she'll use it the way that it's meant to be used. I think she's gonna do childish things with it, like, you know, color pencils and highlighters and like write cute notes and stuff like that, rather than all of the details that you actually need for a wedding. But I hope I'm wrong and I hope she does put it to good use. As for all of her clothes, I hated pretty much Everything outside of that cherry dress, I like that cherry dress, but the reason I like the cherry dress is because it's a cheap facsimile of that strawberry dress that Tess Holiday wore to the red carpets. I'll throw in a picture if I can remember. And that's what it looks like, and that's what I think they were going for. Really like that strawberry dress. 
Um, and I think because this looks so similar to that, I think I like this as well. But that's pretty much it on that. Anyway, that will be it for my Emerlyn. Not much happening this week, so, you know, maybe, I don't think it'll be shorter because I talk a lot, but I don't think it'll be quite as engaging because she's not being so problematic. But hey, I enjoyed this week. I like talking about non-problematic aspects of Chantel. Sorry, non-problematic aspects of Amber Lynn. That will be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. Uh, if you guys like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you hated it, you can give me a thumbs down. That's totally okay. I respect everybody's opinions here. Subscribe if you haven't already subscribed. Hit the notification bell down below and hit all if you want to know when I upload any video right away. Um, I've got all my social medias linked down below. I've got Instagram where I've got food stuff and life stuff and it's really light right now on both, but I promise I will get back to it. I've got Twitter where I am a little bit toxic and a little bit petty, but I'm the easiest reach there. And I've been told I can be kind of entertaining. Plus, you know, all the channel updating stuff there is too. I'm just, I'm never ever gonna remember to put it in the community tabs. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm just, I really suck at that. Uh, and also I've got Patreon. If you guys wanna become a patron, please, that's where you can do it. You know, consider it as the tip jar for the internet. So if you like the job that I'm doing here, you want to throw a few coins in my direction, you can consider it like you're whipping coins at your court jester. Hey, you know, think about it. Once more, you don't have to, it's not necessary, but I would really appreciate it. And I do use all of the funds genuinely just to buy things for this channel. I don't keep stuff for myself. Either way, that will be it for me. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, I'm Jasmine the sequel. And I am not relatable. Peace.